What is going on everybody? Today I'm trying a new camera angle here, so if you guys like it. So in this video we are talking about Pro Tools templates and we'll get to it right after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is a channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about how to make a Pro Tools template and then also why they are important and the benefits of them. So the first thing I wanna talk about is why templates are beneficial. So the main reason why templates are beneficial is simply because they save you a bunch of time and it doesn't matter which DAW you're using, you can create templates for any DAW in any different type of template, whether it be mixing, mastering, recording, whatever. And you could just load it on in to a blank session. And then you got a whole complete starting point there that's gonna save you all kinds of time from having to you know, create uh, tracks, create plugin chains, create internal routing, groups, all that kind of stuff. So that stuff can actually all be saved within a template. So that's why they are beneficial and that's why I definitely use them. So it actually leads me to our first point in this tutorial. And there are two different ways to go about creating the start of a template. So let's get into those now. All right, so the first way to go about creating a Pro Tools template is to have a song you've already mixed. And we'll talk about templates from a mix standpoint in this tutorial. So You'll have it, you know, completely mixed. You'll have all of your processing, all your different tracks in there. And that essentially would be your starting point. And then you would basically turn that into a template. But that's not the way we're going to do it in this video. I just want to let you guys know that is the first way you can go about doing it. The second way in which I did is you can actually just create a blank session, build your session with all the tracks that you think you would have in a typical session, like, you know, drums, bass, guitars, vocals, synths, whatever and put in all the processing that you normally use because the idea of creating a template is that there's a set of plugins that you use all the time. Now, there are gonna be situations where you might want to reach for different plugins in particular songs, and it'll be far and few. I would say a template can you know, cover about 90% of your overall session, and then there might be an extra 10% for some you know, fillers and some stylistic things you wanna add in. So what I did was I created this session here from scratch. So this is a session right now. This is not a template yet. We're going to turn it into one. So what I did was I did drums, I did bass, guitars, and vocals. I did all of my time-based effects right here. These are some of my uh, pre-routing uh, buses here that I use. And if you guys are interested in knowing why I use them, you guys can actually go check out uh, my session organization video popping on the top right right now that will kind of give you an overview of how I do my routing here. And then I route all these to the pre-master and then to the master. So now that you know the two different ways to go about starting the process for creating a Pro Tools template, I want to go into more detail on what's actually in my template and hopefully it will maybe give you some inspiration for when you create yours. All right, so starting over here on the left, I have my drum folder, which I also call my drum bus. So let me open it up here. So this has all my drums in here that would be typically in a full drum kit. I have my kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat, toms, overhead left and right, room left and right, etc. I've also even created a parallel drum track here. And I put them all into this folder here, which I actually end up making basically a bus because um, folder tracks can act as a bus. And if you guys have never used folder tracks before or don't know much about them, I have a video popping up in the top right now. Definitely go check it out. Folder tracks make session organization so much better. So um, in my uh, drum section here, and for all of these sections in here, as you're going to see, I start all of my tracks with the VTM by Slate here. And actually have them on the... Uh, two inch 16 track here for all my tracks. And then on the master bus, I actually put this on half inch two track, okay? And if you guys have the Slate VTM, 
within the manual, there's instructions on basically how to create your analog tape flow. So I'm not going to go into that right now. But all my tracks start with this. And then after that, they all go into my CLA mix sub, which emulates an SSL console. So I have that on all my tracks, okay? Those are my two main plugins, as I say. And then after that, I have, you know, some other things in here. Uh, well, obviously like reverb here. So I have all my drums going to the drum verb. And then the snare is the only one that I actually use a special reverb on on top of the drum verb, which is like a snare plate, because we want to have the snare have kind of, you know, its own maybe bigger sound or something. We don't want to just strictly put it in the room verb with everything. So, um, yeah, so that's my little extra filler there. And then they all route over to the drum bus here, which then I also have some drum bus processing. Then I send a copy of the drum bus over to my paradrums track right here for parallel processing. And then basically this drum bus here and then the parallel drum um, track here, they actually go over to my drum mix here. Okay, so that's my signal flow for the drums. Okay, so for bass, typically for bass, I'll have the main bass and then I'll create some sort of distorted parallel bass track here. Then I'll route them to a bass bus, which is also a folder track. And then I'll route the bass bus to the bass mix, which is over here. Uh, let's look at the guitar bus here. So I just did kind of a guitar left and right here. This might be like an overdrive track or whatever. Typical VTM, CLA mix hub, some music verb, send them to here. Then I got some uh, bus processing as a whole. And then the vocals, I typically don't really do any bus processing for my vocals, so I left this blank. And these are some of the extra things that I use in here on top of the VTM and CLA mix hub. I usually use the VMR by Slate. Uh, for the um, two compressors in there that I love. Uh, I also have a video about those. I have it popping up right now. So definitely check that one out. It's a really good video. And then after that, I got my sibilance. Uh, I actually said it right this time. People make fun of me in my Melodyne video because I said it wrong. <laughs> so uh, this actually is for DSing. If you guys aren't familiar with this plugin, it does a very good job from Waves. And then I have this being sent to the vocal verb, the vocal delay, and a vocal double. So I always use the waves doubler two to thicken up my vocal tracks, okay? So again, this is just kind of a quick overview of my, my session here uh, that we're turning into a template because I just wanted to let you guys know kind of what I do. So before we get to how to actually turn this into a template, let me just go over my pre-master uh, track here, which is essentially my master bus. So I got the CLA mix down. I got the Slate VMR in which I use a couple plugins in there on my master bus. I have the Infinity EQ by Slate if I need to do any surgical EQ. And then, like I said, I run it all through the Slate virtual tape machine on the way out with what I said, half inch two track tape. And then on my actual official master bus here, I actually keep the um, Arc 3 by IK Multimedia when I'm actually mixing in my studio monitors. This is room correction. And then I have the Slate VSX plugin here, which is for my Slate headphones, which does headphone correction. And this is just so I'm mixing on a flat, even level playing field. Okay. So right now these are bypassed. So I just leave them bypassed. And that's how I want them to be in my template. So I can go in and enable them depending on what I'm using. Okay. So that is our whole entire template here. Now let's actually learn how to turn this into a Pro Tools template. All right, so to turn this session into a template is super easy. All you have to do is go up to the file menu in the top left, click on that, go down to save as template, click that, and this will launch the save session template window here. So the first thing you wanna do is pick a category. And these are some of the categories that exist for Pro Tools templates. You can also add your own custom category. So I'm just gonna do mine under music. I'm gonna leave it called Pro Tools Mix Template. And this option here allows you to save the template to a specific location. Or if you don't pick a location, it's actually just gonna save this template with all the other uh, templates under the music category, which is actually what I wanna do. So I'm not gonna pick a location. And then our last option is to either include media or not. And this would be if your uh, session here has audio files in it. And the only reason I would actually include media for myself would be if I wanted to include snare samples, kick samples, because I like to layer my drums 
And I do typically actually use the same drum samples on all of my sessions. So once you have this all set here, you would simply hit OK. And that's it. Your template is created. So lastly, I want to go in and show you how to import your template so you can actually use it. All right, so I just relaunched Pro Tools and we are on the screen where you create a new session. So I'm gonna give it a name first, we'll just call it test one. And then we wanna create it from a template. So we need to check this box here. And then if you remember right, we put it in the music category. So if I scroll down, you'll see Pro Tools Mix Template. I'm gonna click on that. And you'll see it even kept my sampling right here, which happened to be 48 kilohertz for that session. So everything is in order here. Of course, I want to choose where I wanna save it and I already have that set up down here. So I'm gonna simply hit Create Now. And we'll let this load here, shouldn't take too long. All right, so our template has fully loaded in our brand new session, and we are ready to either mix, record, whatever we need to use it for, okay? So now you guys know how to create a Pro Tools template from scratch, you know why it's useful, and you guys have some little extra tips in here and maybe some ideas and inspiration for how to create your own template. So I hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.